Hey everybody, it's Triple L, and now let's talk Made in Abyss episode 10. Apologies for the late upload. Truthfully, uh, I forgot about it at first. I forgot that the episode was coming out. Then the weekend happened, then more stuff happened, and then I just wasn't in the mood to watch a very depressing episode because I knew it was going to be very depressing. And actually, like, props to the episode. Like, you know, it was an episode full of despair, but I really thought one of the best aspects of it was just the voice acting. I really enjoyed hearing Rico whimper and cry. I thought that's what I wanted to see, you know? I never realized how much I wanted to hear and experience that until I had that moment. And it's like, it was also very disturbing for me. Just like, that was really intense. But uh, yeah, you know, anyway, that's part of the reason for why I was late. You know, I just didn't watch the anime. Then when I did have the opportunity to watch it, I didn't want to watch it because it was a, it was already really depressing. So I just had to be in the right place to sit down and watch this. But uh, yeah, Made in Abyss, episode 10. Woo. So uh, this episode, we got a... Did we get a lot? Actually, hmm, no. Uh, once Rico gets injured, we spend a good portion of the episode just kind of diving into how shitty of a situation it is. And, you know, you throw in some good character drama in there. So, the, you know, and that... I don't want to take away from that like that works right like that amount of despair and desperation and tears and crying and just the the patheticness that was Rico's condition at that point uh, that worked really well I think in just presenting the episode so you know that was one of the main points of the episode just like fully getting into like this is a shitty situation um, so I'm not gonna take away from that but in terms of progression you know we start off with uh, Reg, we deal with the giant porcupine monster. We acknowledge that it's weird, that it's doing things, that it's not applying, it's not working on conventional logic. And then we end off with the character that is promising that they can help Rico to some degree. Um, we get the introduction. I'm pretty excited for it. And uh, we get just some like some jargon thrown at us that he is a hollow and whatever else. So. Uh, Overall, you know, it, when we look at it, it's we have an encounter with a monster. The monster screws Rico up badly. Reg is in a bad situation trying to fix her. And then we get our savior popping up at the end of the episode. Um, that's pretty much the gist of the episode. Uh, again, the strength of this particular episode is the emotional impact that it's doing with Rico. Now, some very quick notes uh, from the last episode because some people were in the comments. Um, we're going to be getting three, uh, an hour long episodes. So that's if they're doing a full 60 or 50 something minutes, that's like roughly three episodes worth of content. That's incredible. And it's going to be episode 13. So this is 10. We have 11, 12, and then episode 13, which might be content equaling two and a half or three episodes. So that's quite a bit more than we initially thought we were going to have. That's good. Uh, Made in Abyss kind of needs the time if they want to, depending on where they want to stop, they need the time. Anyway, um, other comments, uh, you know, there was a lot of talk about what that last episode was because there was anime original content there some people were saying well this is what the author wanted to do before then other people were saying that this is something that the author supervised but it was the writers that were in charge of it overall you know um the main point of that was just this is content that popped out that is in the manga and th let's wonder how this works in the grand scheme of things and one of the points that i was saying in that video was um that on one level in terms of an anime production, that episode is fine. In terms of just knowledge of what the series does with the characters, it seems like it was just a really bad... Um, it was like, you know, it's, it was in, in some ways future damage control. Like, they wanted to show like, hey, Rico is capable of doing things without Reg. That was the big point of it. But then with the knowledge of what was going to happen in this episode, it feels like it's... It's just a cheap point because we see exactly what happens with Rico. Like, she's human. She has these giant weaknesses. Reg is really the one that is protecting her because Rico's just too full of weaknesses. And that's like an idea that we do see popping up in this episode. Specifically, when you look at it and from the way that Reg is kind of talking himself about, talking to himself about it, it's in, in some ways Reg's fault 
but at the same time, you know, he makes it, he paints it in kind of his direction that it's his fault, that he could have done things differently, that he could have used the incinerator, that he could have uh, made Rico back up a bit. But really, um, in the grand scheme of things, it's not truly Reg's fault, it's just a lack of information. And that's going to be something else that we touch on in a little bit. It's a lack of information. And so with this episode, you have that kind of like the idea of fault being thrown around. But there is something of value to be taken here is that Reg's more more capable of taking damage and Rico's the liability because as a human, she's just too fragile. And that's ultimately what we end up getting. And we end up getting a, a whole episode that it, that just shows us Rico is super fragile. This is a horrible environment for her. Um, what I'm ultimately trying to say with this point is just like, for the previous episode, in context of this episode, it's just, I find it cheap to try and tell us that Rico is useful, is, uh, is, mm, useful to a degree that she actually isn't when you look at the long run of things. Although there is another stipulation here, Rico is very useful when it comes down to the knowledge of the abyss. That is where she shines, but she really does need Reg there at all times because if she gets hit, that's pretty much it. Her chances of surviving or her chances of having a fun time have gone down like dramatically. So the episode ultimately is, is playing around with those ideas, right? We have uh, Reg assigning blame to himself that he could have done things differently. And we have Rico trying to do her best, with, uh, her best sorry, my word slip there, with what knowledge she has. And what we ultimately get is just a situation where both characters just, there was no way they were going to get out of that. They had no idea what they were truly dealing with. Like Rico knew the monster, but she didn't know what it was actually capable of. And like the behavior that that monster was exhibiting are, is really, really abnormal behavior. And it doesn't really make sense given what, or it's not that it doesn't make sense. It's just, it's very mysterious at this point in time. And so also when we're up dealing with Rico and she's still trying to coach Reg through doing what he has to do. Like, again, this is showing this is Rico's strength. It's specifically her encyclopedic knowledge of what to do. But beyond that, she is in a lot of trouble. The, the, the more she goes into the abyss, the more trouble she's going to be in. And this is where we really need Reg to be her shield because he can take the hits and not have to worry about things like poison. So overall, you know, like the idea or the ideas presented in this episode, um, they're very valuable. And again, I don't want to take away from Rico. It's just, this is a, an issue of Rico is not, inc is not invincible. She's not incredible. She's very fragile. Although her personality makes it seem as, as if she could handle the world, like even a tiny cut could take her out of the game. And Reg has to be there to be able to be more decisive to be able to deal with all situations that could potentially harm Rico. And again, like when Rico is there coaching Reg, you know, props to the girl, like she's doing incredible. But now let's touch on another topic about what ultimately sabotaged Rico and Reg to some degree. And it's ultimately coming back to the knowledge that they're using. And really, when you look at it, the episode started framing us towards this being a kind of concept Although it's not going to be a concept that's ultimately touched upon. It's just going to be something that's in the background. Right, right from the beginning when Rico was talking about the eggs and uh, the, you know, the spikes that were on the cliff. Like how Rico said, well, you know, these are going to like f uh, hatch and they're going to be those squids like just swimming around there. When she was saying that, she also gave away that uh, no one really has a name for it yet. You know, and it, her wording, she makes it seem as though this is just all happenstance. Like things aren't properly documented yet. The monsters don't have names. Um, so what that's ultimately trying to tell us is that the knowledge that the climb, the oh sorry, the people, the excavators have, the divers, you know, it is a very fragile knowledge. Um, and we do have this from the world building that ultimately the knowledge of the abyss comes from the people who have died in it. The knowledge of the abyss comes from the people who have experienced its terrors. It's secondhand information. And what this ultimately leads to is the problem that we get into with at the end. Like uh, one of the statements that Rico says is that according to a black whistle, um, ripping off or 
cutting off a limb was very difficult and that's what she uses when she's saying that they have to break the bone the thing here is that Rico is able to act on her knowledge pretty quickly and she's able to say like yeah okay cut off the arm that's how we're gonna get away from this and the implication is she knows this because other people's have experienced this particular monster. She's working off of the knowledge that previous explorers have passed on to the surface. But from the implications of the new character, from what he's saying, is that her arm can still be saved without having to cut it off. So the idea here is like, again, these kids are going in there, but they have half-baked knowledge. They don't have the full knowledge. And without the full knowledge of the situation, uh, Rico's effectiveness is also severely damaged. And we see it in the episode. We see it with the porcupine monster. Like, again, they say, um, this is what Ozen warned us about. These monsters, they have weird instincts, but they don't know to what extent. And because of that, it puts both of them in a very dangerous situation. Reg is there to be able to protect Rico, but he can't do much unless Rico's directing him properly. And she can't do much if the knowledge that she has isn't complete or is flawed in some way. So, you know, very interesting situation going on. Overall, um, it's a, it, it sucks. It sucks. This was really showing us like, yeah, guys, this is a shitty situation. No training that you're going to do on the second layer is going to make you any more equipped to deal with the fourth layer. Um, it's pretty rough. Now, uh, let's just talk about the drama of Rico and just the horrors of what Reg had to go through. So overall, like I said at the very beginning, it's very unsettling. Props to the voice actors. Props to Rico's actress. Like, I just... Wow, um, it was this. It was disturbing. It was uh, very disturbing. Um, it made me feel kind of uneasy. I appreciate that. I like getting those kind of feelings from anime when I'm watching it. So massive props. And also, the effect of uh, the curse activating so quickly. Holy man! Like that was. Whoa, the one thing that always gets me about the curse is how quick it is to activate, even if you don't go up that high. It's ridiculous. But uh, it was also cool to see that the poison got expelled first before her blood got expelled. That was that was neat. Um, but yeah, Rico and how they showed her perspective of all of it, what she was seeing in the world and uh, her tears and crying and the screams when she was getting her arm broken. Like all of that was just it really brought that unsettling feeling to the episode and the use of the music you know they kept it really quiet to uh, or you know controlled even out while like these things are happening with Rico and then so her screams are more accentuated overall you know it was really unpleasant it was so unpleasant but in the, the good ways anyway um I think I'm gonna end it there I'm pretty excited for next week Overall, the main things that I wanted to take away from this episode, or the main things I really concentrated on, were what ultimately screws over Rico and Reg, what sabotages them. Um, really, both of them have incredible ability and potential. Rico with her knowledge and Reg with just raw ability. But not knowing what you're going to deal with is like the biggest issue here. And this is again coming back to Rico's uh, personality. She goes in head first. Like she has some amount of information, but this lack of awareness of how terrifying things are in the abyss, it's ultimately going to be one of the things that's going to keep coming back to haunt them. Every time they don't know something, they've just opened themselves up to a gigantic fall. And uh, that's pretty much what we saw here. But uh, yeah, guys, let me know what you thought down below. Let me know what you loved about this episode or what you really didn't like about this episode. Did you think this was a bit too intense? Did you think this was not intense enough? Let me know down below. And uh, yeah, I hope you enjoyed this discussion. Until next time, I hope you have a great day.